hey, they're my gorgeous friends on the internet. Today, we're going to learn to think and code and expand our brain cells to levels never seen before. So this is a course over at Brilliant.org called Thinking and Code, and they're fantastic. Uh, Brilliant is awesome. Uh, they recently came in contact with me if I wanted to make a dedicated video. And generally, I tend to avoid those types of videos as they can come across quite addy. But I agreed under one condition, if I could finish one of their courses from start to finish and kind of take you along the journey and see how the experience is. So let's do it. Let's get into it. This is going to be fun. Okay. So let's head over to the courses section here on Brilliant. And as you can see, these are all the courses they have here. So math, they have a bunch here from like visual algebra to calculus. You got programming in CS, data analysis, science, logical reasoning, uh, technology in general, like how LLMs work and cryptocurrencies. Uh, but we are going to do this one. Let's see if JavaScript has taught me anything. Thinking in code, let's go. Okay, so tap the blocks to write a program. We want to make sure that the truck self drives over to the delivered spot. So I'm here. I want to go left. Okay, so turn left and then drive forward. That's going to be it. Pop up. It does it. Boom. Deliveries have completed. You are fired from Amazon deliveries. We don't need you. Two lines of code replace your job. Let's go. Happy times. Okay. So we want to drive forward here uh, and then we got to turn. Wait, hold up, hold up a minute, hold up a minute. If I turn, can I still drive? I don't think so. So I think I need to turn right drive forward and then turn left, right? Oh, wait, let me try that again. Let me, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. I don't need the answer. I don't need to know the why. Drive forward, turn right. Wait, it's three moves. Never mind. Wait, I didn't know I could do two drive forwards here. I thought I just had access to one. Okay, so that makes sense. So drive forward, right? I can turn right then and then drive forward again. That's going to pass. Let's go. Okay, I don't need to know the why. I know why. Uh, so here we go. One, two, forward, and then right. So drive forward, drive forward. We go right and we drive forward again. Easy. Easy. Programs are precise instructions that describe how you complete the task. That's right. You know it. Okay, here we have to deliver two packages. So we're drawing forward. We deliver one. We turn right, drive forward again, and then deliver again. Awesome. 15 points for that. Sounds good. So when designing a program, write precise pseudocode is a great first step. And I tend to do this a lot with uh, lead code problems as well, right? You kind of write your pseudocode first out before solving uh, a problem to an algorithm. Uh, it's, it's a great way to kind of have a good understanding. So yeah, so these are like methods on, on an object here. I honestly thought I completed like a whole section here, like the first level, but that was just like a sub like module here. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, we'll do, let's do, I'll, I'll skip a bit ahead. I'll go to debugging, debugging programs. Let's see how we do that because I haven't learned how to do any of that yet. Okay, so we have a repeater here, a loop the loop as they love to call it in the programming language. So we're basically running the same things over and over again. So we're going to drive forward and deliver the package four times, right? That's a little for loop right there explained for you. Nice. So we got that. And then we can do it the same way here where it needs to make sense. So forward and then deliver, turn right, and then drive forward. Is that correct? Let's give it a shot. Oh, no, that's not correct. Hold on, hold on, try again. I don't need to see the answer. I can figure it out. So what went wrong? What went wrong? We crashed in a building. That's not a good sign. So drive forward, and then we should have driven... No, drive forward, deliver, right? And then we go forward again, and then we turn right. Let's go. Okay, there's a bunch more here, but let's go to level two to spice things up a little bit. So while loop is basically going to run until you reach a break point. I reached my break point. The while loop just ran and ran. All I see is code everywhere. I'm wearing my wife's dress on my head. Okay, we got a bit more complicated here. We got two while loops going on here. So here we go forward, uh, which is just a while loop in itself, right? And then we deliver. So here, 
I'm, I'm assuming it's not at delivery because we're doing a check, right? Not at delivery, not at delivery, and then we get up here. So let's do that one for the first loop. Okay, and then we break out of it, deliver the package, we turn right, and then we do another loop here, which is gonna be, I think the same, right? Deliveries remain. Oh yeah, it's deliveries remain because once we get to the end here, we shouldn't keep needing to go and driving forward because we're out. So this needs to go false after that. So let's try that. Boom, boom. And here we reach zero. So that condition goes false. Nice, 40 points for that. I'll take it, thank you. Okay, so that's a bit of the loop section. Let's head down a little bit further and see. Uh, let's do a bit of the level three here. All right, if statements, programs often need to decide what to do based on one condition, right? If you have a user signed in, you wanna run a certain logic there. If they're not signed in, you wanna maybe prompt them with a, a login button. Uh, but in this case, we're talking about replacing Amazon delivery drivers. So um, an if statement runs commands only if the condition is true. So in this case, if add delivery, deliver package. Add delivery, is that true or false? I think I'm on it, so I'm gonna say true. Yes, I am. Uh, select a condition for the if statement to complete the deliveries. So we have deliveries remain. So this would basically go false here at the end. We drive forward, and if we are at the delivery, then we wanna deliver the package. Because if we didn't have this, then we would try to deliver here as well in this middle empty point. Uh, but let's try that. Skip there and then deliver, deliver, deliver. Nice. So everybody decides to purchase a bloody package today. So we have to deliver all of these. So I think the easiest way we could go about this is to turn right, then we go to the end, up, left, up, right, up, left. I think so. Or we could also go straight up, right, down, right, straight up, etc. Let's do it. Let's see. While deliveries remain, let's do up here. Let's go up. And then we turn right. And then, hold on, this is, no, I cannot do it that way. Because I, I need to basically stop and go back down as well. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me think, let me think. What if I go for, no, I have to go forward. If I go right and then forward, then I'm out of spaces here to go left again. If no delivery ahead, oh no, wait, I, I can turn. I can turn once. Let's go left. Let's see. Oh, damn. What did I do wrong? Okay, so, oh, I turned right immediately. That's probably not a good idea. Let's try, let's try that again with driving forward first. Boom. No, we crashed again. Shit. Okay, let's just go forward, right? Let's just go forward. And if there's no delivery ahead, then we want to start turning. So we'll turn right here in the if statement. So I think that makes sense. And then what we want to do is deliver the package. Turns. Should turn in. There we go. Nice. Okay, these are getting bloody tricky right now. Who? What? Imagine you actually are a delivery driver and you see people ordering in this fashion. That would freak me out. That would actually freak me out. Okay. So we have a bunch to deliver. We'll go forward. I think that's an obvious first step. And then we need to check. Uh, what do we need to check? We go forward. We need to deliver them, right? So that's going to be there. And then if delivery is to the right, which is here, then we turn right. And if it's to the left, we turn left. Okay, never mind. That's not too complicated. Yeah, we smashed that. Okay, let's skip ahead a little bit. We'll go over to level four here. We're going to do complex logic. This sounds like a fun one. And versatile programs can make complex decisions. Let's see how we can build those. 
So we have a while loop with an ifs and else statement, and in the else statement, we also have an if loop. So it's a nested. Is that hard for you to understand? That's because you're not a master programmer. Uh, easy peasy. So while the while loop basically is going to run whilst the delivery still remain. So that's going to pretty much run till we do everything here. The if statement says if the street ends ahead. So basically here would be the point. And the else here is just going to drive forward otherwise. So it's going to run here, 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 and then stop here. So we need to do something else. And then the delivery is handled for us automatically. So all I need to do here is turn right, move forward and turn right. That's literally it. Turn right, drive forward, turn right, check. Boom, we've done it. We've done it again. Level five here sounds really fun as well. Programming a website, automating emails, automating social media. Let's see how we can do that. Let's start from the beginning. A business with a nice website can outshine the competition. Let's see how we can do some web programming. If a business wants to sell products online, what should their website include? Uh, a product catalog, that's right, easy. Uh, which program displays all products even if the number of products changes? Uh, repeat 42 times, display product, display price. Well, this one, because here we have a static number 42. So while here we actually have the products remaining, it's like kind of doing like products length. So we're always keeping track of that. Uh, websites typically includes more than just a list of products. Which feature might customers expect from the website? Well, a uh, menu, a search, probably both. There we go. Which program adds one menu and one search bar to the website? And let's see here, this one here, because we're not running it in the while loop. So let's go with that. Boom, I'm an expert web wizard. Modern websites need to look sleek on any user's device. How should a website change for mobile devices by shrinking the width. Correct. Uh, which program changes the width of the website to 300 pixels on mobile? So here we go. We have an if statement and we set the width to 300. Otherwise, we display on desktop. So it's the first one. Awesome. Loops and conditional logics can build websites with the light to impress customers. Awesome. Skill check. Let's do this. We've been speed running this. Uh, which program completes the task? The program should display all the blog posts on the website, even if the number of blog posts changes. So again, here we're looking at the length of the blog post rather than a static number. So it's going to be that one. Here it's asking us to display one search bar. So again, as long as it's outside the loop, that's going to be correct. And for the mobile device here, uh, the program should display a menu on top for mobile and a menu on the side for desktop. So if mobile device display top menu, uh, it's going to be this one. All right, let's see how we can automate our emails. Successful businesses know how to engage customers with emails. Let's apply programming skills to uh, automate this process. So what kinds of emails should businesses automate? Marketing or customer support. Uh, they're, I feel like they're doing both these days with AI and everything. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's actually, it's actually, it's, it's, it's marketing. Okay. Uh, which program sends an email to every customer while customers remain send email or while products remain this one, right? We're checking each customer. Nice. Uh, different types of customers should get different emails. Which one should a new customers get well the welcome nice uh, which program sends the right email to each type of customer so we're doing a while loop for each customer if there's a new one we send welcome uh, else we send the welcome back and that's the one all right how could businesses reward customers who order every week how about send them a survey annoy the crap out of them Okay, so let's do this one. The car can get to a delivery faster if it doesn't check every street along the way. Add commands to complete the delivery. So we're doing a loop five times if at delivery, 
uh, then we want to deliver the package. So as you can see, we can kind of place them in blocks here. So there we go. That's pretty straightforward. And then we just add the drive forward in the repeat. Oh no, it looks like the truck is trying to navigate out of bounds. Crap. Okay. We got to face east first. So that's going to go outside of the loop. We just need to do that once essentially. There we go. Boom. Smash that. Uh, let's make a program into the command so we can reuse it. So pretty much like a function, right? So what would be a good name for this command? It would be transport east five. All right. It's, it's a bit more specific, uh, because we do it five times, right? Uh, okay, use one command to complete the delivery. Ooh, how does this work? So transport east, well, it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, five. Boom. The command transport east changes its behavior based on the input. So it's like your parameter inside a function. Okay, so we can run this. So you can just rerun the function, right, with different parameters to get different results. So here we can go two, and then we can go south again. Uh, we can go one, two, three, so that's fine. And then we can go east again, one, two, three. Check. Boom. So again, you're just kind of composing uh, the same function here or functions that are quite similar. All right, let's 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 work with some list. We'll go to level seven. Ugh. Okay, processing inputs. Learn how to turn inputs into values for our programming use cases. Okay, so the truck is at two here uh, and the delivery is at five. What is the distance between the delivery? Oh, that's math. That's just some math. So we do five minus two, which is three. Okay, so our truck is at eight. And we have our deliveries, which is six, four, and zero. So we're looping over them. So we're gonna transport west. We're gonna go west and then look over the distance. Uh, and then we need to set the distance actually first because we don't have the distance yet, right? Question mark. Uh, so that would be truck minus delivery, right? Our current position, so eight. The first time we loop over this, it's gonna be six. So it's two, right? So we're setting that to minus eight, uh, eight minus six, sorry, which is two. And then we set the distance. Boom, boom, and boom. So again, if you do the pseudocode, it would look something like this. For delivery and deliveries, distance equals to truck minus delivery, transport.west, and then we pass in the distance parameter. Skill check, I don't need it. I know how this works, but you can do it if you want to. Let's do the last one here, which is solving mazes. So let's improve our maze solver with new helper functions. Make the truck transport right whenever possible and only transport left if right and front are blocked. My brain, what does that mean? Okay, let's just look at the code. So while truck X does not equal delivery X or truck Y does not equal delivery Y. I need to read this five times. I'll see you in 10 minutes. So here, Front is blocked, but right is not blocked. Here at the end, front is blocked again, but right is not. So we'll go this way. And then here, if we go to the end, right is still open. Doesn't do anything. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Let's start over. Okay, so let's go right here. And then we f go forward here if the front is open. Let's see how that works. Okay, else here would probably go left then, right? Because we get stuck. So we go forward here, right here. Otherwise, we go left. Look at that. We're solving mazes. Let's go. So yeah, that's a quick taste here on the Thinking in Code course here on Brilliant. Highly recommend you to check it out. There's a total of 585 exercises. That's crazy. We've only done a couple here. Uh, but other courses I recommend you to check out is, is the math courses. I've 
always find math really kind of difficult and boring to learn. But with like visual interactions like this is, is actually super fun. So if you want to join Brilliant, uh, check out the link in the description below, or you can also scan this QR code here. Uh, you get 20% off your annual subscription as well. So appreciate Brilliant for sponsoring this episode and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.